Hey guys, what's up? It's your girl, Andrea Griffin Rogers here, and I have a word from God that he gave me today, um, and it's called Count the Cost Before It's Too Late, and when he gave me this word, sorry about that, when he gave me this word, um, I actually was in the midst of doing something, and somebody had asked me something, and I couldn't really give an answer right away. And so I had to pray about it. And this is something that I learned on my journey with faith is it's best to pray about something first before you just go ahead and just answer because it may not be the answer that God wants. You always want to make sure that you're doing everything out of God's grace, not your own strength, not out of loyalty to someone, not um, because somebody did something for you. And so you're like, fine, I'll return the favor. No. Because you have not counted the cost of what it's going to take for you to do whatever it is they're asking you to do. And so this is why God says you have to ask for wisdom. You can get much further in a multitude of counsel than you can just doing it by yourself. The Bible talks time and time again about how two heads are better than one and a three-braided cord is not so easily broken. That means that when you have a multitude of other people who have wise answers to give you, they can. or And sometimes you may say, well, I don't have anybody in my life that's wise, Andrea. Like, what do I do? Well, in moments where you can't call somebody or you don't have somebody that's wise in your life, the best thing to do is go to the wisest person there is, and that's Jesus. Call on the Lord. Ask the Holy Spirit for understanding. Because he tells in Proverbs 3, anyway, to lean not to your own understanding. But in always acknowledge him. That's Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. And so in your moment of needing to give somebody an answer, the best thing to do, as I do, is say, uh, can I get back to you on it? <laughs> you know, you can phrase it any nice way you want to make sure it's nice because we want to make sure we speak in the spirit and truth, which means love. But to let somebody know, hey, I got to get back to you on that. I can't give you the answer just yet because I haven't counted the cost. Now, you don't have to tell them all of that, but in your mind, you count the cost. What is it going to take for you to do whatever it is they're asking you to do? That's what it means to count the cost. Like, okay, you're asking me to, let's say somebody says, hey, can you take me to the store? Okay. Now, to them, that seems like a simple thing to take them to the store because they need to go for whatever reason. But you got to count the cost of what you had to do that day, what you had going on in that moment, because it's going to take away from what you're doing to tend to what they want. And even though um, God makes us for community, he also makes us to not be burnt out by community either. And I heard my spiritual life coach, Latoya Okia, I heard on her um, YouTube channel, she said, um... Some to the effect of, like, somebody got to get out, you know. It, everybody can't be in the, in the barrel, basically. Like, if everybody in the barrel, if everybody in the boat and the boat is sinking, then how is somebody else going to, how are we all going to, you know, survive, basically? Somebody else has to get out the boat to get into an anchored place or, a, or um, a bigger structure, basically. I'm paraphrasing her example because I can't remember her full example, but this is the, the gist of it. Excuse me, somebody has to get out in order to pull up somebody else. And a lot of times, especially when you live in a tight knit community or you are really close with your friends, you trying to be everything for everybody and you not being nothing for yourself. Hello, somebody. And so God says, I don't want my children to be burned out. If you go read the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. You realize that time and time again, with all of Jesus' ministry, there were many times where he stole away or he pulled away from the disciples and the crowd and he went to be with his father. He went to rest. He went to pray. He went to count the cost of the next moves he was going to make. But he never made any move without cal calculating the cost first. And I want to even give you scripture because you may be like, well, is that? Yes. Jesus teaches it in Luke 14. Go with me. I'm going to read from the New Living Translation. And he says, a large crowd was following Jesus. He turned around and said to them, starting at the 25th verse, if you want to be my disciple, you must, by comparison, hate everyone else, your father, your mother, wife, and children, 
brothers and sisters, yes, even your own life. Otherwise, you cannot be my disciple. And if you do not carry your own cross and follow me, you cannot be my disciple. But don't begin until you count the cost. This is Jesus. Let me pause real quick. This is Jesus telling us to follow him. And yet he's saying, hold on, Nelly. Don't begin until you count the cost. That means count what it's going to take for you to be completely obedient to the father. You don't begin just because somebody said, hey, can you do me this favor? Hey, come follow me. Hey, come do this. You got to count that cost because you got to see if you have the right payment for it. I use practical examples for spiritual principles. If you don't have the right payment to, let's say, for example, the first part he said, by comparison, hate your life, hate everyone else in your life. God says you can't be my disciple. And it's not saying that he really wants you to be mean and evil towards these people in terms of how we think hatred is. No, he's not seeing being hateful to them. He's saying dislike the things of this world. That ties into his Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 6. Don't be storing up things, your riches in this world because this world is temporary. Your body is temporary. You got to store up your treasures in heaven. And so God's saying the same thing in a different way or Jesus saying the same thing in a different way in this word. By comparison, hate everything, everyone else so that you have the, the mindset that says it is me and Jesus and that's it. Because he needs to be your most important relationship. And a lot of people don't make Jesus their most important relationship. They make their loyalty to their family, their friends. Um, their job, their career, that bag, getting that money. You idolize all these other things and it goes against God's law and Moses. And he reiterated the same principle in, in Matthew. He says, and I believe he's doing the Sermon on the Mount as well, that you should have no other God. Yes, Matthew 6. You should have no other God but the one true God. You should not be worshiping no other idol. And he even sums it up and says that um, the sum of the law of Moses is have no other God, but the one true God, no idol and love your neighbor as yourself. And you may say, OK, well, Andre, but that, sound, that kind of seems oxymoron to the message you're given today, because if we should love our neighbor as ourselves, doesn't mean that we should sacrifice everything for our neighbors. No, because like I said, with the example, if everybody's in the boat sinking, how are you going to get to shore? How are you going to get to survival? How can we pull somebody up? I mean, think about it in terms of if everybody is, is caught in, a, I think it's called a riptide in, um, in the ocean. If everybody is caught in that, I can't get you to safety. I can't get me to safety. But if there's somebody on the outside of the current of the, of the tide that's, that's causing us to go back into the, the ocean. If there's somebody on the outside of that that's not in that flow of water, then they have the advantage to throw us a safety net, to throw us a, a life, a life um, jacket or something and pull us to safety. Another example in terms of water, I know I can't get away from this, <laughs> but if you are swimming in the deep part of the pool, and somebody that don't really know how to swim is in there and, and they thought they was being cute. Just, well, I'm going to just try to see. And you know how people, if you ever, if you ever seen before, I have, where somebody may have started out on the, the side where they could stand up straight and they start popping around on the edge of the pool and then trying to get closer, closer to the deep to see how far they can get into it. Well, if they slip while holding on to the edge and they slip into that water, they can drown. And some and sometimes a person in that moment will panic and grab onto the nearest person. Now, you may be a good swimmer, but if this person is grabbing onto you and they're drowning, they will pull you down. What am I saying? God is saying count the cost before you decide to do anything. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be so, you know, something that somebody wants you to do for them. It could be something you want to do for yourself. And God says count the cost. Do you really have what it takes to do that? Do you feel God's grace empowering you to do that and make that move? Do you have um, all of the information? Hello, somebody. Everything that glitter ain't, go ain't gold. 
And everything that seems free ain't free. And so you may want to grab something because it's freely given to you as you think. Not, not talking about the word of God. I'm talking about anything else. Like, oh, somebody saying, oh, come get this thing for free. And, and you're like, oh, you're giving a new car away for free. Okay, what's the catch? Count the cost. Because the catch may be, and I, I used to hear this back in the day um, with shows that I used to watch with my my grandma when I was younger, like um, the game shows where you would like spin the wheel or whatever, and you would play these different games and win different prizes. And you're like, oh, you want a brand new car. And it's do 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 And all the music goes off and everybody's so excited and hype because they want a new car. And... Not even realizing, because I know as a, a kid I didn't know that. As an adult, I do. You win that brand new car that they paid for. And so, you happy to take that car home. Not realizing there's taxes on that car. Mm -hmm. And so, it's really not free. They may even charge you to send it to your house from the location of the studio. And so, you realize, then, wait a minute. I thought it was freely given to me. So, that's why you got to count the cost. Of everything, do I have what it takes to receive or to do something? Because if I don't, you're going to be in a, a whole heap of mess. I give you another example. I remember um, a while back, I had um, jumped on board with an assignment that somebody else had. How many of y'all out there were like that? You know, you saw somebody else doing something. You're like, oh, I can help out with that. And then you jump in trying to help them with whatever they're doing. And, and realize, you know what? I don't even have the strength for this. I'm so sorry. I'm so weak. I remember, for example, I wanted to do something um, as it relates to children. And so I was like, oh, I was telling the person, oh, yeah, I'll help out with, with the kids. And I'll do this and do that. And I jumped on board and I couldn't even stay consistent with it. And I was like praying to God because I'm like, God, this is a good thing is with the church, everything. Like, why can't I do this? And I had to learn that because you're not graced for it. Hello, somebody. And I was operating in my own strength, wondering why am I so exhausted? Why am I so tired? Why am I so weak in doing this? Like, why is my body hurting so badly? And just sidebar really quickly to give you a more backstory. With that particular example, I also was battling some severe health problems. That I talked about before on my Ages of Revival podcast. So, while I'm still struggling to live <laughs> with the health problems I was dealing with, and not just live, I mean like literally stay alive. That's how bad it was. I'm also trying to volunteer at the church and do this and do that. And God was like, you doing too much I didn't tell you to do. That's why you exhausted. That's why you tired. This leads me to the scripture um, that I want to actually segue to the scripture of Hebrews 12. And it says, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. You want to hear God say to you, well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter into your master's kingdom. Then you need to be obedient to what your master asks you to do. A.K.A. you want to hear God say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Then that means that you need to serve him in the way he tells you to serve him. Hello, somebody. And a lot of times it's not going to be what you think it is unless you ask God for wisdom. And so you may go ahead and say yes to, to doing something with somebody. And it may not seem like it's that deep. But you don't know the cost because you didn't count it. What is it going to take for you to do that? What is it going to take financially if, if, if there's finances to deal with it? What is it going to take you in terms of energy level? What is it going to take away from what you were doing that day? Some of you out there are so focused on, let's say, for example, getting that bag that you'll take extra, extra hours on the job. And God's saying, but that extra hours you took to get that bag, I needed you to put into them kids. For those that got kids. Or I needed you, and maybe you don't have kids, and you, but, but there's an elder in your family that wants to spend time with you. And God says, that extra time, I really wanted you to spend that last hour with your mom, with your dad, with your grandma, with your grandpa. 
just sitting and talking to them, whether it be on the phone or in person, just take them out for lunch. But you were so gun ho on doing things in your own strength and now you don't even have the energy for the people that God placed in your life that he says I wanted you to pour into I wanted you to minister to them I wanted you to just sit up under them and just make them feel the presence of God through you because you're meant to be salt and light in the earth but how can God use you if you won't count the cost? And so I know I said I'm gonna be here, not gonna be on here too long. I want to say this last thing: Proverbs 22, verse uh, 26 to 27. Don't guarantee another person's debt or put up security for someone else. If you can't pay it, even your bed will be snatched from under you. What this is saying is again, count the cost. You may think it's so simple and easy to just say yes to everything. But I read in this amazing book called um, Balance by Teray Roberts. And in chapter 6, which is one of the most powerful chapters I've ever written and read in any book in my life. He says 90% um, of what you respond to should be no. 10% should be yes. Because you need to understand that your yes is expensive. And he goes in and talks about, he says, um, balance is not about better time management. It's about better boundary management. And a lot of people out there, you don't have good boundaries. I know I used to be one of them. <laughs> God had to work on me. So again, I don't ever teach any message that God didn't work on me first to give to you. I, he always dealt with me with it first and I'm here dealing with you in love. But you wondering why you so exhausted, you so burned out, you so just stressed and irked and worked and, and whatever. And God is saying because you don't have balance. You don't have the right boundaries around you. You put up boundaries to the wrong thing and not to the right thing. There are some things that God will say, yes, I'm giving you grace to do that. Even if you feel like I'm too tired to do that, I don't think I could do that. There's a part in the Bible that talks about. Where the disciples came back from ministering the gospels, Jesus sent them out two at a time and they come back and they're exhausted and they think they're going to go rest on vacation. And Jesus says, let's, let's go over here. And this is, this is where it ties into the uh, five loaves and two fish. The, the, the sermon that he gives and he takes a little boy's lunch and feeds over, um, you know, they say speculating between over 20,000 people. The disciples didn't feel like handing out no food. <laughs> they like, listen, we've been traveling. We've been talking. We've been ministering. We've been casting out demons. We've been healing the sick and, and, and rescuing the captives. We are tired. We want to go on vacation. But Jesus said, no, but I'm giving you the grace to pass out this food and feed these sheep. And because they were obedient to do it, there came a blessing of an overflow of leftovers for them and they didn't have to share either the end of that scripture says that each disciple had it was 12 baskets of food left over there were 12 disciples or apostles so therefore there were 12 i don't know why these people came from but anyway there were 12 there were 12 that got eat a basket for themselves to feed on and so God says, if you just follow my kingdom principles, Matthew 6, seek first my kingdom, live righteously, live in the way he tells you to live. Everything else will be added unto you. That includes the grace you need to run your race, as we just read about in Hebrews 12. Count the cost. It is so important. Let me finish up the last part of Luke 14 before I let you go. But don't begin until you count the cost. For who would begin construction of a building without first calculating the cost to see if there's enough money to finish it? Otherwise, you might complete only the foundation before running out of money and then everyone would laugh at you. They would say, there's the person who started that building and couldn't afford to finish it. You don't want to be laughed at? Count the cost. <laughs> count the cost. It's a vital um principle that I had to learn in my own life because I didn't have boundaries I would just say yes to everything I would take on other responsibilities I would just do whatever you know any anybody who's sick especially I was a nurse in the family I've been a nurse in the family for a long time and so if it's an elder sick or whatever you, you know to call Andrea because she gonna say yes to take care of you and God had to release me from that spirit in this season to say no I've given you an assignment I need you to stay focused on the purpose I have presented in front of you. Store up your treasures in heaven, not on earth. 
I need you to stay focused in this season. You have served on those capacities long enough. Now you got to serve me in this way I'm telling you to serve. And notice really quickly, everybody ain't going to be happy that you say no. And that's okay. You got to be at peace to know you went to God first before you get him to answer. That's why I said in the beginning, pray for wisdom. And God will give you the wisdom. Because there are some times where he'll say like to the disciples, yes, go do that assignment, go do that work, go help that person or whatever. And there are other times where he will say, peace, be still. Rest. Say no. Don't do that. Set up this healthy boundary. Do not agree to take on that person's debt because you haven't counted the cost. And so may the Lord bless you and keep you. Cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord God be gracious to you. Show you his favor and give you shalom. Give you his peace. I told y'all be quick. Take care. Bye now.